Jealousy makes us do all sorts of terrible things. And it was the same a hundred years ago as it is today. Hello folks, I'm Steve Gilly, along with Rod Mullins, and today we're going to share a story of lust, jealousy, murder, and justice in eastern Kentucky. You're listening to Stories, a history of Appalachia. Boy, the green-eyed monster, when you say those words, you think of jealousy almost immediately on on just about anything in, in regards to events and things of today, Steve, but when did this happen? Now, this was back around the turn of the 20th century, and wow. this is a very fascinating story that apparently made the news all over southwest Virginia and eastern Kentucky back at that time. So let's get on to the story. Manassas, or Mace, and Nancy Hunley lived in Somerset, Kentucky back around the turn of the 20th century. The couple had one child, 13-year-old Miles, and Nancy had a child by a previous marriage, 22-year-old Phoebe King. Oh, Rod, there was one more player in our drama, Sarepta Sellers, also known as Epsi. Hmm. Well, it appears that Epsi and Mace developed a fondness for each other, leading to an affair. Mace Hunley would send his son Miles to Epsi with messages for the two to make clandestine rendezvous. And it was this habit that would soon lead to tragedy for Epsi Sellers. On August 23, 1900, Epsi got a message from Miles, supposedly sent by his father, for her to meet Mace at Flat Rock, Kentucky. Epsi took off expecting to meet her lover in this sparsely settled part of Pulaski County, about 30 miles from Somerset, for, well, a bit of excitement. Well, it turns out that Mace Hunley never sent that message, so the excitement she got, Rod, was a whole different kind. You see, Nancy, who was sick and tired of the affair between her husband and Miss Sellers, was going to put a stop to it once and for all. Nancy had sent that message through Miles to get Epsi into a spot where she could get rid of her. Waiting with Mrs. Hunley were Miles and Phoebe, up from her job as a domestic in Georgia, to help her mother. As Epsi approached, the trio sprang out of the woods, and Nancy confronted her about her carrying on with her husband. Now, the argument grew heated, and Epsi was attacked with a club. Nancy, according to evidence later produced at trial, pulled a revolver and shot Epsi Sellers several times, killing her almost instantly. A Mrs. Tucker and another neighbor there in Flat Rock witnessed what happened and tried to intervene, but Nancy Hunley threatened to kill them both if they got involved. At that, the three took off. Doesn't sound like it was too sparsely populated at that point, does it, Steve? Or Nancy didn't care that she was making a lot of noise and attracting the neighbors one or the other. <laughs> One way or the other. <laughs> so by the following weekend, the area was in a fever pitch. The Louisville Courier Journal reported that a posse was rounded up to hunt for the trio and that there was fear that if they didn't catch them soon, someone from the area might with a lynching to follow. Phoebe had separated from her mother and stepbrother and dressed as, get this, a man and made her way from Flat Rock to Harriman, Tennessee where she got on board the Cincinnati Southern Express to Atlanta, where she was working at the Kimball House as a domestic servant. She left their employment and then went to New Orleans to work, then on to Chattanooga, which is where she was working as a servant in December of 1900 and returned to Pulaski County by Somerset Chief of Police R.O. Hughes. Hughes brought her back to Kentucky to face murder and manslaughter charges. Phoebe's mom and stepbrother remained on the lam, however, prompting Governor J.C.W. Beckham to offer a reward of $150 each for Nancy and Miles. And by the way, Rod, a little bit of trivia here. Mr. Beckham, as lieutenant governor, became governor after the assassination of William Goebbels, whose story we told in an earlier podcast, if you recall. That is, that is correct. I re do remember that. According to the reward notice, the state felt that they were in hiding in the mountains of Tennessee. Close. Only one state off. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, Nancy, Miles, and, oh yeah, Mace Hunley, for some odd reason, all took off together and stayed on the run, moving from hotel to hotel under assumed names for another six months. After Phoebe was captured, it all came to an end for them, not in Tennessee, as the state of Kentucky had thought, but in the mountains of southwest Virginia. At the end of May 1901, Mr. and Mrs. Hunley 
and Miles were found hiding out in, of all places, Norton, Virginia. Mm. They were arrested and sent back to Kentucky to face charges of their own. Well, Mace was released since he didn't have anything to do with the killing, but Nancy was charged with murder, and 14-year-old Miles was charged with being an accomplice. The trial began in June 1901 in Somerset, and Nancy decided to rely on an unorthodox defense rod. Her attorney argued that there was an unwritten law in Appalachia that a wife or husband had the right to avenge the ruin of his or her honor, hoping to at least get her a reduced sentence. That kind of makes some sense there, Steve, at least the old Appalachian law, so to speak. Well, that unwritten law, yeah, of course, it's kind of hard for the judge to follow the unwritten law if it's not written down, don't you think? Uh, Yeah, that's true. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the prosecution and the defense both argued passionately for their respective sides, and the case was sent to the jury on the 29th of June. And, Rod, they obviously came up with a unanimous verdict, didn't they? Well, Steve, the jury could not come to a unanimous verdict. After taking 159 votes, the jury remained deadlocked, 10 for acquittal and 2 for conviction, the same vote as they had on the first ballot. Miles Hundley was released on his own recognizance, and Nancy and Phoebe were released on $1,000 bail pending a second trial. Now, in November, that second trial began with the introduction of new evidence, a note from Phoebe to her mother telling her to wait until she got there before she did anything about Epsi Sellers, and the testimony of a Mr. Taylor and his daughter who stated that Nancy had told them that she intended to fix Miss Sellers. Again, the defense relied upon that unwritten law that is used in the first trial. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, I suppose. Anyway, the jury got the case on November 5th and after eight hours delivered its verdict, guilty of manslaughter. The court sentenced the two women to five years in the state penitentiary. Fortunately for the two, they didn't have to stay the full five years in the pen. In fact, they barely made six months before the Kentucky State Prison Commission released Nancy and Phoebe on parole on April 1st, 1902. It seems, Rod, that the two had enlisted the sympathy of the good women of Frankfort, Kentucky, who visit the penitentiary to comfort the prisoners, and they got them to plead for their early release. Upon getting out of prison, the two announced that they would be returning to Pulaski County to live and back into anonymity. We haven't been able to find out what happened to them after that. Wow. That... It's kind of like going back, you know, from the frying pan back into the fire, so to speak. But then you don't hear anything else about what happened to their lives after that. That's that's a, a really wild story, Steve. Yeah, that's the green-eyed monster. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the story of the murder of Epsi Sellers, making her the victim of the, quote, unwritten mountain law, end quote. Another story that makes up the history of this place we call home. Now, we have a favor to ask of you folks. Stories is now available not only on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher, but on a brand new app called Radio Public. Now, if you download the app from the iTunes Store or the Google Store onto your phone, then listen to stories through the app, we get a share of the revenue, which will help us be able to keep bringing you more of the history of Appalachia. Now, Radio Public also has many of your other favorite podcasts, and you'll be helping them out too. We're on Facebook at Stories of Appalachia, and we're on Twitter at Story Appalachia. Thanks for listening. Till next time, take care. So long, everybody. Mm-hmm.